So uh, I'll make it really quick. So uh, uh, just before starting this, uh, my name is John. I am a software consultant. Uh, SLR, uh, what I'm here to talk about is about Solar. So Solar, anybody, uh, heard, like quick show of hands, heard about Solar? Heard. heard. Use Solar? No. Nobody? Like search, OK. <laughs> yeah, they are like buddies, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> Lucene, yeah. So uh, yeah, Elasticsearch and Solar could be buddies, so something like that. <laughs> so OK. So, uh, so maybe uh, for others who haven't used any search technologies, uh, like why do you think we need to be even bothered about this? So we do have searches like in di databases you can search, right? So why do you think you, we need searches? A separate technology as such for that? Any answers? Performance, so what's the problem in databases? Like we have a heavily performant databases anyway. Structured, yeah. That's one thing. Uh, so uh, why we, uh, yeah, the main application of search engines comes to e-commerce. So one of the basic things. So yeah, as it says, like if uh, if the user cannot find it, they can't buy it. So uh, without, uh, there are lots of, I think 99% of occasions you don't go and search for the manually, right? You go and type it in the search bar, whatever products you want. So it all, that's how important the search is. So uh, databases and l the, okay, uh, you might be wondering why it's Lucene written there. So Lucene is the basic core component within Solar. So uh, uh, Lucene is a search library, and Solar is a search engine with lots of other plugins. So that's why it's written as Lucene over there. So uh, both, if you see the high-level picture, both looks very similar. So the where the problem comes basically here. So database index is not designed for full text search. If you put a huge bulk of text inside a column, database column, and you do this uh, fuzzy kind of searches, like like percentage, the indexing that you have used in, uh, you index your columns, right? Those won't, won't be used at all. Because the indexing happens uh, not for the every letter within the text. Whereas that's not the case with uh, uh, Solar-like uh, uh, systems. So what basically differs is that they have something kinda, kind of an inverted index. So anybody aware of inverted indexes? So basically, it's only a concept. So what happens is whatever, uh, let's say you have documents coming inside, text documents, they come inside. What happens is those words within the text, they are picked out, and those are indexed to the documents. After the elimination, After the elimination that there are a lot of tokenization, filtering, all comes in. Applied. Filters are getting applied, yeah. So uh, high-level high picture, this is how it looks. You have terms, and you have the documents. So uh, so that becomes easy. So you just need to search for a term. It knows which document to retrieve back. Um, this is something I already told you. Lucene is high performance, full text search. Uh, it has additional API. Uh, you have uh, uh, Lucene has a primarily Java API. So SLR has additional APIs, REST API, uh, other integration APIs like SLR J, uh, Java uh, client for SLR. And they have uh, for Python and all that. So losing 100% Java. So that's why I'm presenting this here. <laughs> I don't even have <laughs> so continuously improved and turned over. OK. What's written over here is t 10 years. So it's been there for more than 10 years. Um, losing history, dark cutting in 1999. Uh, it got uh, moved to Apache in 2001. Even uh, it's been improved, yeah. And Solar and Lucene merged in 2010. OK, a little bit about Solar. Yeah, like I said, it's open search, search engine. Uh, this was initially started as an um, in-house project. So it got donated into ASF in 2006. Right. So uh, yeah, the SLR, it has got lots of options. So it has something called as uh, 
not only the Java, like I said, Lucene has only Java API. This has got a lot of additional handlers or input sources. So, uh, yeah. Uh, for you can push changes from your email server or RDB emails into Solar. So, they have something called as impo data import handlers. They're nothing but Java plugins, uh, just a few classes, that's it. And Tika is Apache Tika library. Some, most of you might be aware of it, which is useful for processing uh, PDFs documents. And you have uh, request handlers. Those are similar to your servlets kind of stuff. So uh, request handlers, they can take in your uh, CSV input, XML, JSON, all that. So you can push any of data from any of these sources into Solar. Um, and this is how the high-level picture is. Hopefully, I think it's readable, right? Should be readable. So uh, two, there are two, basically two things happening. Uh, first, the data is getting indexed. And at the same time, people will be searching on the index data. So you extract the data, data is pushed into SLR. So th this is a Lucene or SLR, what do you call it? So analysis happens, and you have the input tokens, and that is pushed into the Lucene index. But in the same place, like user searches, you pass, this pa the string is passed, uh, you, Lucene query is created, and again, it's going into the same thing, same index. So um, when a search happens, the results are retrieved and shown to the user. So this is pretty easy. Uh, coming to the terminologies, I will explain them. Yeah. So documents are the basic uh, unit of information in Solar. So uh, uh, within a document, so document has to is a basic data that describes something. So without documents, there is nothing to find. So document is what it all means. Um, and within a Solar, they say like um, they bring a structure to a document by giving fields. So fields, uh, you're talking about an example, you can say a blog. So let one blog be a document. So blog can have uh, three fields. One will be the date, uh, title of the document, and the, subject, the content of the document. So those are the fields of the document. So yep, and you define different field types. Um, so a field type definition basically says the type name of the field Class name is basically the what int or string, or whatever it is. And you have field properties. So this is a sample document. So you have, uh, like I said, this is a blog document. So you have a uh, blog ID. So IDs are uh, kind of a best practice. You can even remove IDs. But for performance or reasons, they uh, by default, the ID field will be there. So unless and until you manually remove that field from the SLR configuration, it won't be removed. So you have an ID, you have a title, and you have a content. So Title and content are some fields that I created. So uh, this is a sample document that you use to push. And this is a sample involving XML pushing. Like I said, request handlers, right? This could even be in uh, CSV or JSON or any document, yeah. Next, sorry. Yeah. OK. OK. So fields and fields type. So this is the top two. Uh, I don't know if it's readable. So top two uh, lines that uh, uh, those two lines define the fields. So you are saying uh, the first line is something I already told you. Uh, the ID field is already there. And you define the title field. And you give a type. So something to notice here is you could have written string here. So string is a built-in data type. So instead of that, I am giving my data type. So uh, these custom data types has to be defined uh, separately by saying that it's a text field. Text field is something like a, a string, but uh, the advantage there is like you can attach multiple analyzers to it. So analyzer is nothing but uh, you can say that uh, it's a combination of tokenization with some filtering. So uh, they have uh, Solar has some pre-built analyzers. Or you can throw away analyzer itself, and you can plug in your own tokenization and uh, filter classes. So uh, another thing to note here is that you have index and query uh, stuff, right? So it means while indexing, what are the tokenization that needs to be done? And for querying, what are the tokenization and filtering to be done? Most of the scenarios, you will have both as similar sets. But if you make it totally different, it won't even find, right? So you do some uh, changes to data while indexing. And if you do the similar thing, it makes sense. One, uh, some cases where it will differ is, uh, let's say, you have something called as uh, a synonym uh, filter, a syn a synonym filter. So you don't need synonym filter or uh, synonyming that uh, uh, categorization in the index. So you don't need to f 
let's say a word comes in like uh, run. So uh, sprint is another word that me, uh, make, says that you're moving fast. But while indexing, you need not find the synonym and store it. That's not needed. But while querying, you need to have the synonym filter. So that it will search for sprint also when you give run as a search result, search query. I hope you're getting it right. So that's the basic. So yeah, uh, short notes on what uh, uh, a, an example of analyzer class. So this is again a field type with uh, custom field type. I am only specifying analyzer. So here uh, I said like. Uh, you can specify index, query, and separate tokenization and filter. This is a very simple example where I am not separating uh, for uh, separating uh, definitions for indexing and uh, f searching, just one class. So um, tokenizers, they break data into lexical units. They call it as tokens. And filters, they transform. They can even discard, modify, whatever it is. So uh, this is one. Uh, common uh, set of tokenization filtering that's done for English language. So they have a, sta a standard tokenizer, then lowercase filtering, stop word filtering. You know what stop words are, right? Ease and this and all. Uh, this is an older version of Porter, Porter Stemmer. So uh, these are basically Stemmer libraries, which says, yeah, exactly. So you have a running. That should be changed to run. So. All those English language specific stemming can be done using these libraries. OK, uh, there are two, uh, there are many actually, so uh, many properties for fields. So uh, most of the fields like ID are not multi valued, right? There is only one ID. You cannot give multiple values. Whereas title and content can be multi valued. Indexed and stored are uh, usually uh, for ID, it's both true and true. But for certain fields, you might give uh, stored as false and indexed as true. Uh, the meaning is basically whatever, if the field is, in, uh, for the field you're you giving index as true, those fields will be indexed. But the actual content won't be stored. I hope you get the difference. So you the reverse inverted index will be created, but the actual document uh, or the field within the document won't be stored. So this, the, uh, so this will be uh, switched on and off based on scenarios. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 So you don't store it; you will index it. Correct. Yeah. Uh, this is very tricky. Uh, uh, actually, while I started with Solar, uh, there were issues where, like, uh, uh, you need to know what to make it. Uh, what to flag it like? Uh, for example, uh, your use case is like search within a field. You have to uh, index should be true, of course. To search something, it has to be true. But there are certain scenarios where it has to be uh, something uh, like for in this case, use as unique key. This can be true, and anything else also can be do true. But this cannot should be false. So a little bit of common sense will help you to do that. But sometimes it gets very tricky. Um, because like in this case, unique key cannot be multivalued at all. It has to be false. So these kind of uh, trickiness, like it's there uh, it's a little, in the learning process, like you'll come across it. Uh, coming to SLR installation. Uh, yeah, uh, initial installations, older versions, now SLR is 5.5. Uh, the older versions, they had a sample core. So I'll come to what core is. So they had something called as an example, dog, example core. So you can, while installing, that will be al already there. But in uh, recent versions, the example itself is removed. And there is something called as they have a tech products uh, stuff, so a sample use case. So you have to manually install it. So uh, starting XLR is nothing but, so XLR you can just download, unzip it, that's it. Nothing else to be done. Go to the um, directory folder and give start. So that's as simple as that. While you give a start, these are the default configuration that goes in. So if you want to modify it, you can give this manually. And uh, this is how you create your uh, load your tech product sample, and this is uh, how you create your own sample your your own core. So, for this demo, I have uh, this core created actually. I'll show you later. And querying, yes, uh, uh, there are a lot of ways you can query within SLA. So, uh, 
that querying I will show you well, uh, during the demo. So uh, core, OK. So core is basically, um, you can say that core is one single index, actually. Um, but not only the index, but it involves the data with the transaction log settings and all that. So uh, uh, OK, SLR Cloud started as a separate project, uh, I guess, two years back or something. So uh, meanwhile, uh, after a, a certain stage, what they did is they combined both the projects. And if you download SLR, you have the SLR Cloud built in. So you don't have to do anything else. So, so cloud, I will tell you what it does. So, okay, collection is another term terminology within SLR, uh, which is pointing to one logical index. So a core will definitely have a collection, but a core involves not only the index or the collection, but involves uh, everything else, like configuration, everything else comes in. Uh, so in a classical, uh, your local installation thing, right? So when you install a local uh, SLR core, you will have only one logical index, so only one collection. But uh, in SLR Cloud, your cores, or you can say one logical index can span multiple cores. So your core might be in the same machine. There, may, there might be another core in the same machine. Or you might have another core uh, running on another machine. And a single index can span across all this. So that's a change in within Cloud. Uh, I'm purposely going faster, so probably <laughs> we can discuss in detail later on point in time. So yeah. Uh, like when you first install, you have one collection you have. On one machine, you have one core. So within the core, you have the collection. Let's say you are uh, you want to create uh, one more core. Your data is becoming bigger. A single index is becoming very huge. So you partition index. You become you make two shards. They call it a sharding. So you shard the data into two. Uh, you can keep it in the same machine, or for performance reasons, you will move it to another machine. So you have two cores. All is part of the same collection but two shards, so one half there, one half here. So uh, again, like for, uh, what to say, um, scalability, uh, what they do is like, uh, they create uh, replicas of the shards. So uh, you have two machines, whereas the first machine again has the second shard also within itself, the second has, the core two has the first shard also. So it's doing both ways. So. Yeah, and again, uh, this uh, when SLR, uh, so all this is possible with SLR Cloud. So, um, in cloud, there is no concept of master and slaves. So, it's like uh, there is a concept of leaders. So, if you work with Zookeeper, uh, that has a concept of leaders. So, Zookeeper is built in in SLR Cloud. If you want, you can use Zookeeper to monitor, like, uh, give configuration. Yep. Uh, by default, it initial when it SLR Cloud starts, it's first come first serve. So leaders are uh, first come first serve is the leader. So, and then it b uh, the routing changes based on Zookeeper. So, okay. So that's all. Don't clap. I have demo. <laughs> so, I'll just show you. <laughs> This is something I didn't speak of. Uh, okay, this mouse control is a problem. Oh. Okay, so uh, this is basically uh, um, in SLR you have this uh, built-in Jetty server that's giving you the admin interface. In Lucene you don't have it. So uh, when you install SLR uh, and when you start SLR, this Jetty server also starts, and you have this beautiful admin interface. So you select your core here. OK, connection lost. I need to start it. OK. Yep. So you select your uh, sorry cores here. So I have a sample core. This is where you can inject documents using admin interface. So. And uh, you have a lot of other things, analysis and all that. So for I'll just show querying alone. So they have this querying engine. So where uh, you basically say is content. Oh, sorry.
So what it returns is basically all the documents. Right. So this is one document, the other is another document. So version is another field, like ID, there's a version field that's, you can remove it if you want, but if you put that, you have the versioning capability. So. Yeah, uh, debug query you have to give. There are some additional parameters that will show a little more information, actually. Uh, something like I explain. So uh, there are additional uh, tweaks that you can basically, uh, not only tweaks, but uh, let's say, If I give uh, aggregation meaning you want uh, I don't think so. No, you cannot run two separate queries and do aggregation. The, the query has to be a single query, to my knowledge. I don't think anybody. So this will one second. I will push another document into it. So so this document has been pushed in. Another query. So any idea what this does, the tilt and a, it's a tilt and a one. Can you guess what it does? Weightage. No, <laughs> not weightage. So I gave role and games, and I get this. Title, colon, role, space, games, then I give it tilt and one. Uh-huh. Okay, I will make it, longer. sorry, sorry. It's better now? No, no. Uh, what it does is um, you have role and games here, right? When you put codes, it has to occur exactly like that. But when you give give a tilt and a number, right, it says uh, you can have mul a kind of a uh, multiple words within it. So one meaning you can have one word within it. Two meaning you can have two words within it. It's like a, uh, I don't want to get the extra word for it. Textual content of an image. Okay. No, uh, you want to pass the content text within the image, uh, not within Solar definitely, but maybe this uh, third-party providers might have it. And I have to show this also. Oh boy, this is very small. Okay. So maybe I think, uh, see what, what your question was, there is an image, and then image has some text. And then I want to persist the data, the text inside the image, and then I want to search it. That is possible. That is what okay. the Apache Tikka comes into the play. Okay. okay. So you can, you can send the data through Apache Tikka, it processes it, and then it stores the data, and then you can uh, okay. search on that. It has some uh, functionality so that you can extract the data from the by using a default method which is available with Apache Tika. It's like a server or something like that. Apache Tika is a software which you can download it and you can code it in the Java. So you can extract the data from the image and store it in the database. You can uh, while searching, you can retrieve it from the database. Elastic search, yeah. So uh, so to finalize it, like anybody heard of Watson, right? Watson, IBM Watson, IBM Watson. Yeah, yeah. IBM, Watson. IBM Watson. 
What's in W A S T one? W A S T S. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The cognitive, basically cognitive engine, like W A S W A T S O N. <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> they have alchemy question and answer API. Yes. There are a lot of other stuff like image recognition. Uh, so it actually uh, came as part of. Uh, uh, so there was a. Uh, I had some free time in office. So uh, what we did was basically, uh, we thought of uh, mimicking something what Watson does, which is highly impossible. They have a hundred. Okay, Watson. What basically does is it has lots of knowledge within it. Knowledge databases. Uh, ontology, have you heard about ontology? Yeah, uh, knowledge, uh, yeah, knowledge graphs. Yep, uh, they have Wikipedia extractions, a lot of stuff. So they have this data and they uh, do uh, analysis on top of it. Uh, textual grammar, language later analysis, NLP, and all on top of it. And they uh, get information based on your queries. It's simple. They have lots of services built on top of it. So actual Watson engine is there. They have services built on top of it. So they have question and answer engine. So question and answer engine, what it does is you give a query, uh, like where is uh, uh, Calcutta? So it will say this is the DB, but no. So knowledge base, but it will what's the name Blue mix control. Yeah, okay. Maybe if we have time. Okay, so what's and services were exposed as part of Blue mix. So Blue mix is IBM's uh, cloud. So, uh, before Bluemix, well, Watson was there even before Bluemix, but we, it was not accessible because there is no way we can access it. So, uh, it was we did this project before before even Bluemix. So, we had no clue of what Watson does. Only was some uh, their uh, what to say sales related videos in uh, YouTube. So, there was one guy who worked for IBM. He wrote some blogs related to uh, Watson. Uh, but what he tried to do was like build a small uh, mini Watson within his back uh, room, within his own house. Uh, so, but he was very careful not to use the terms or terminology that Watson really used because it will be an uh, issue, right? So, even his blogs got uh, erased after uh, 15 days. So, luckily, I was able to read his blogs actually. So, something like that. So, uh, uh, what I mean to say is like uh, what we tried was basically something like Watson does. Uh, it was a uh, little bit of we were do it, we were able to do it somewhat uh, in a very minor scale because of SLR. So uh, we did uh, we used SLR and uh, Apache NLP, Open NLP, uh, and we were able to build a small uh, query and answer engine. So, uh, the project is actually open source. I mean, I I put it in GitHub. So it's uh, if you just uh, take it and run it, it won't run. So <laughs> that's guaranteed <laughs> because. Uh, actual code, I missed it. So the actual uh, the uh, demo that we created in our office, we, uh, uh, the, uh, the machine crashed. So I had an earlier version of it, and I didn't got, I didn't get time to build on top of it. So I just pushed it here. So, but if you want to run it, I can help you out. So, so thank you guys. Yeah, that's it.